The thing is, is that we all do these things as beginners at sewing, either because we just don't know why we're being told to do something, so we skip it, or something just looks pretty, so we want to use it, or we are problem solving and just think, this will work, right? <laughs> and in this video, let's talk about my top seven things to not do as a beginner at sewing. Uh, hopefully this will now be on your radar at least, so when they do come up, you can think twice before you do do them. My sewing friends, welcome, welcome. My name is Evelyn Wood and I'm the creator of VintageSongSchool.com. If you are brand new here, welcome. We are actually on the hit of a new series, the start of the year, the start this month on Sewing Basics 101. I want to start learning, my, learning to sew my own clothes. What are all the steps and things I need to think about? And this video in particular, as you know already, is about the things not to do. I've made lots of other videos before, you know, things missing, things I wish someone told me to do. These are the top seven that I kind of wish someone had told me about because, well, I mean, the thing is though, we're all going to make these mistakes. I've made every single one of them more than once and you probably will too. It is how we learn sewing, but I want it to be on your radar because it's mostly these things happen and we get ourselves into trouble is because we don't know why we're doing things. So that's, of course, we're beginning and we're just learning these things. So I want to shorten that learning gap for you so you can just, you know, learn to sew those fabulous clothes that you want in a lot shorter time than I had. And that is what we do here. So if this is of interest to you, do hit the subscribe button uh, to my channel because as I said, it's the start of a series. We're going through all the steps of all the things to get started sewing. The right way, that is. That is my whole philosophy. I want you to be able to sew quality clothes that fit and that you really love. All right, so where do we start? The first thing not to do is to don't pick stretchy fabric, sheer fabric, slippery, shiny. Basically, don't pick difficult fabrics. Um, and it is very important to read the back of the envelope because the fabric suggestions here are appropriate for that design. But even within the suggested fabrics, some are more difficult than others. Now I've made a video previously about fabrics to avoid. So the difficult fabrics to actually don't pick these ones. And I have um, upcoming some videos on how to pick good, easy fabrics and how to sort of start understanding fabrics more. So stay tuned for that one. But you really want to one, follow the instructions of the fabric suggestions because we all just, this is what we do, right? We're like, this fabric looks so pretty. It's gorgeous. I'm going to make something out of this. And we don't realize, I've done this so many times, and we don't realize that one, stretchy fabrics need a whole other set of different stitches to sew with, or it's, uh, you know, denim is just so thick and horrible that it's like really hard to work with. It's just choosing difficult fabrics, stick to easy fabrics and stick to fabric suggestions uh, within the easy ones that your pattern will tell you to because it will go with the design that you're also trying to make. So fabric, like designs are made to certain fabrics to look good together and just make it easy for yourself. Keep it easy by not choosing difficult fabrics. Okay, the next one is to don't just add more to the side seams to make it bigger or equally take them off to make it smaller. Now, hear me out, this can work sometimes and you've probably done it and I've definitely done this at times as well. But the thing is, and why do we come up to this problem first of all? We either the, made up the pattern um, and it's, you know, too small and we think I need to make this bigger or you're sort of looking at it and you think, I'm just going to add some to the side seams here and I'll put it together and it should just work out perfectly, right? Well, sometimes, as I said, yes, and other times, no. It can work and sometimes you can get out of it, but the thing is, is that we don't realize all of these pattern pieces are all mathematically worked out so that, you know, this front seam matches this seam exactly and they should meet up exactly. And then your waist seam here, right, the bodice and the skirt are the exact same size, so they are calculated to the millimeter to fit and such a thing as stitch line. And I don't want to overwhelm you with all that. That's for a different videos, but it's just that we don't, 
realize that it affects so many other things when we just sort of add more to the pattern here or there and how that affects the fit, how that affects those pattern pieces being sewn together. And we just don't really quite grasp and understand all that to begin with. And it is something that you like that's that comes naturally as you go through more patterns and everything. And you definitely will get there and be able to fit and adjust everything. But when you're first starting, just randomly whacking on some random amount onto the side seams or just cutting off doesn't usually work out as well as we would hope it does or at least we think it will in our minds so avoid just randomly adding or taking off um, amounts from side seams or center back investigate further uh, to kind of figure out what might work for your pattern and just how it might affect all the different other pieces, etc., that you're doing, or maybe just choosing a different pattern size is a better option for you. So just investigate further before you just start adding or subtracting and just adding amounts onto the side seams because there is only so much that you can add or subtract before it just doesn't even look good too. So, um, you know, I usually say about a size you can get away with and more than that, it generally doesn't just let you get away with it as easily. That's my little tip for you. Uh, don't use different seam allowances. This is a really interesting one because I know when you first start sewing, one of the questions that you really have is you'll start looking inside the garments that you own and think those seam allowances are way smaller than the ones that I'm being told to sew with, right? You usually have a 5 eighths or a 1.5 centimeter. And sometimes it can seem really big, thick and chunky and you think, just use a smaller one because it looks less bulky right <laughs> don't just change the seam allowance and why like we talked about before is that the patterns are all mathematically worked out and exactly where you're supposed to stitch will match up to the other pattern piece along there if you use a different seam allowance one the sizing will be completely wrong if you use a smaller seam allowance you've actually made your garment bigger and it can end up way too big just by using a little bit different seam allowance and the whole size is completely off and then two your pattern pieces will no longer match together so you're trying to put a facing piece in to your actual garment and it just won't fit because they're no longer the same sizes you get what I mean. So we kind of think that we'll just use a smaller amount or maybe larger, um, you know, when we first get started because we don't realize how mathematically worked out for sizing and fit all the pattern pieces are and that they should all fit in together. And there is a reason for using 5 eighths or 1 centimeter, 1.5 centimeter too. It's easier to sew with for one, usually depending, there's lots of things that depend, but generally it's easier. Two, you can always trim it down later. So Keep that same stitch line, but then your seam allowance, you can trim that back and finish it smaller if you want. And that's the way that you would have a smaller end result rather than just sewing it smaller to begin with, right? So just trim it down if you do want it smaller. Now, this one's a good one. Don't assume that the pattern envelope or the pattern anything has all the information you need to sew a garment together. This one is huge. Number one is that, well, a pattern was never designed as a learn to sew tool. So these weren't designed for someone to pick up and learn how to sew with. These were always designed for skilled at home dressmakers who already knew how to sew to just make up a new fancy style that was the latest fashion at the time. And so what we do, of course, is we pick up a pattern and think, I'm going to make this and try and learn how to sew. And it, can be really, really hard, of course, because that's not what they're designed. Now, the pattern does have all the information you need if you're an experienced sewer or know all sewing basics, like how to even use your machine, how to back stitch, how to do seam finishes, what all the notches and things are for, and all this sort of stuff is just kind of all the assumed knowledge of sewing patterns. And I will have a video coming up to cover some of that, so do stay tuned for that. But it is very important to understand that this isn't a learn to sew tool. This is just a tool of sewing to give you a style of a garment and all of that assumed knowledge that you that goes with knowing how to use this is what we call sewing and if you want to have a fast track to cut through all of that assumed knowledge of sewing that is why i created my online school vintage sewing school to give you all the tools the resources the 
basically the shortcut and everything listed in order that you need to learn it as well. So you can actually just pick up a pattern and use it properly. So if you'd like to learn the right way and learn how to sew quality clothes, cut through all that assumed knowledge, that is what I do at vintagesewingschool.com. I would really love to help you um, on your sewing journey and to have you in class. I'm going to leave links down below on how you can come and join us uh, there. So do remember that you'll need more information than just this pattern, be it a sewing book, be it deciphering it all on YouTube, be it a sewing course that's designed like that, like Vintage Sewing School, but you'll need other things to help you decipher the pattern and learn to sew. Don't skip pressing. Anyone who's sewn anything for a little while, you know what I mean. And if you've been on this channel, you know this is a major one, is don't skip pressing. So very often you read the pattern instructions right on the inside and it'll just say, sew the seam, finish, you know, da da da, press, and you're like, I don't want to get up from my sewing machine, I'm just going to skip that. And you don't press it until the very end and you'll probably know you'll get mm, okay results. Pressing is key. So pressing is ironing, sort of the same thing. Um, and it's just that you need to do it after each step. The golden rule of sewing is you sew your seam, you finish it. So that means you finish off the raw edges and then you press it. And then you move on to the next step. That's the golden rule. If you follow that, your garment will look so much better at the end. I can't even tell you how much better. You get good at pressing is the easiest way to get better looking garments without having to actually get better at sewing. It's just press and get better at pressing and don't forget to press along the way as you go through the garment promise. So don't skip the pressing. It's one thing that we, every single one of us does and still will at some time, but take the time to press it. I promise you, it will reward you with a great looking garment. The next one is to don't ignore the grain line or the cutting out, the laying out instructions. So we are very, very tempted and well, we've all done this, is you either, the grain line is that straight line that runs on your pattern and it's to go in the straight grain of the fabric. I've made other videos about what, how, why to follow all that, to learn about that. This is the layout, right? And it's telling us how to lay out these pattern pieces. So two things. One is we're twisting it, the grain line kind of, you know, because it just fits better, right? Why use so much fabric? I could just mush all these pattern pieces and twist this one this way and flip this one that way and put this over here. And you know exactly what I mean, right? <laughs> Don't do that. There is a really, really good reason why there is a grain line drawn on every pattern piece. It's so that the way the fabric is made, it will fall in a certain way and you want that fall to be even and uniform throughout the fabric. Imagine if your fabric had stripes down it. It's a very obvious way. You don't want stripes going this way and then some straight and then the other ones are like that way on another pattern piece. You understand and it does fall differently with the grain line. And it is important, there's a reason they've made you do it on this, is because you don't want them all twisted and sideways and everything. And it is good to follow this. Now I have made other videos on how to go make your own layout, so to say, and the rules to follow, because you need to know the rules before you can break the rules, right? So uh, that video will be linked down below as well. That's one of the very first things that you can start making up yourself, as long as you know what the rules are that you're supposed to follow. But don't just make up your own layout or ignore the grown land without knowing why they are there. And don't sew late at night, don't sew when cranky. Basically, everybody knows no good sewing ever happened after insert whatever is a late night for you, 10 p.m., midnight, whatever that is for you, <laughs> I promise. Um, it is something if you, for example, if you've unpicked something 16 times and are just frustrated and cranky and it seems like there's more holes and more damage and it's just never going to work out and it's like disaster just put it down walk away a few hours or come back better yet the next day come back with fresh eyes fresh outlook on life and come back to it because i promise it will be much much probably simpler to fix than you thought 
and when you're tired and really drained more mistakes happen and you don't want those mistakes to snowball to that point of like frustration where you throw that across the room into the garbage or something we've all we've all been there but it does make it a much more pleasurable if you get to that point my advice is definitely just put it down and walk away and come back later. What do you think? Were you about to do one of these? I would love to hear down below which one has maybe just helped you to not do. Or even better, we are a sewing community here and you can learn a lot from the comments section here. If you are just new, make sure you read all the comments down below because I would love to hear from you. What else should we add to the list here? What not to do when you're beginning sewing? What's something that you wish someone told you to do? Like my little list here, what's something you would love to add to it? So read those comments, make sure you like and heart. If uh, you found a really comment useful because we are a sewing community here and all trying to just help each other get better at sewing these great quality garments that we want, like those, the, the, the clothes of our dreams, right? Okay, until next time my sewing friends, happy sewing, bye.